Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk you through the different types of echocardiograms. So if you've been booked in to have an echocardiogram at the hospital and don't know what to expect, this video will give you all the details so you feel prepared on the day of your scan. If it's your first time here on my channel, my name is Hafiz and I'm a cardiologist training in London. I created this channel to increase awareness of heart disease and to tell you how you can improve your heart health. If that interests you, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're up to date with all my videos. Let's now get straight into the topic. So what exactly is an echocardiogram? An echocardiogram, commonly referred to as an echo, is a scan of your heart. It's like the ultrasound scanning used in pregnancy, as it uses sound waves to build up a picture of your heart. The type of ultrasound used is specifically designed to visualize your heart and its structures. The sound waves go through your heart, allowing us to take detailed pictures of what's inside your heart. In cardiology, echo is the most commonly used heart scan. It's a useful test in diagnosing and monitoring many heart conditions, including heart valve diseases, where the echo can visualize your heart valve function and detect issues like narrowing or leaky heart valves. Congenital heart defects, where the echo helps us identify structural abnormalities present from birth. Cardiomyopathy, by assessing your heart muscle size, shape and function. Heart failure, as it can evaluate your heart's pumping ability and detect fluid buildup. It's also used for surveillance of some chemotherapy agents and to monitor your heart function during treatment. And finally, it's used during emergency situations where it can help identify life-threatening conditions like a heart attack. So echo can help us in many different clinical situations. There are three different types of echo scans, each serving a different purpose. The type of echo that you will have will depend on the condition that we are trying to diagnose and treat. The first type of echo I'm going to talk to you about is the transthoracic echo. This is the most common type of echo. In this scan, the echo probe or transducer is moved across the chest to get various views of your heart. This is why it's called transthoracic, as the sound waves pass through your chest to reach your heart. It's non-invasive and provides detailed views of your heart's structure and function. As this is the most common type of echo, I will talk you through what happens in the hospital if you're having this test done. So when you arrive, you'll be given a hospital gown to wear as you will need to remove all your clothing from the top half of your body when the echo is done. You will have your height and weight measured as these are important to interpret your scan results. You will also have your blood pressure measured as, again, this is useful information when reporting your scan. During the scan, your privacy will be maintained as you will be in a hospital clinic room in the outpatient department with the curtains drawn. You'll then be asked to lie on a couch and electrodes will be attached to your chest using small sticky dots to monitor your heart rate and rhythm during the scan. A gel is used to help the sound waves reach your heart and it can feel cold and sticky but is otherwise harmless. The healthcare professional doing your scan will be either a cardiac physiologist or a doctor. They will move the probe in different areas of your chest around your heart. The probe gives off high frequency sound waves which pass through your skin to your heart. You will not feel the waves going through but you may hear swishing noises from the machine which is the ultrasound waves bouncing off the structures of the heart and the sound of the blood flowing through the chambers of your heart. It's a very safe test and most people find it's not uncomfortable, although you may feel a bit of pressure as the healthcare professional doing the scan presses the probe onto your chest to obtain the best images of your heart. They may also ask you to hold your breath or adjust your position slightly to optimize the images. 
the duration of the scan varies from person to person and can take from anywhere between 20 minutes up to an hour. In some cases, the results of the scan may be discussed with you in a clinic appointment with your heart doctor. Otherwise, the results will be sent to your GP. Most people go home after the echo is finished and there's no special recovery time needed. You can resume your normal activities right away. The second type of echo that I'm going to tell you about is the transosophageal echo, also known as a TOE or TEE, depending which country you live in. This is a more invasive type of echo as the transducer is attached to a thin tube that's guided down your throat into your food pipe called your esophagus. Since the esophagus is close to the heart, this type of echo provides clearer images of certain parts of your heart that may not be visible with the standard transthoracic echo. This is why it's called transosophageal, as the sound waves travel through the esophagus to reach your heart. As this type of echo is more invasive, there will be more people involved in making sure the scan is done in a safe way. Usually there will be at least two people in the room, one person to control the machine and another to operate and manoeuvre the probe. To prepare for the scan, you will be asked not to eat or drink anything for at least six hours before your scan to reduce risk of vomiting. There will be specific instructions in your letter, so do read it carefully. You're also advised to have someone pick you up from the hospital after the scan as you may be given a sedative to help you relax. You will usually have the standard transthoracic echo as baseline at the start. For the TOE, you'll be asked to lie on your left side and swallow a small probe which is mounted at the end of a flexible tube. The width of the probe is around the size of your index finger. A local anaesthetic that numbs the area will be sprayed onto the back of your throat and you will be offered a short-acting light sedative to help you relax. This sedative is injected through a cannula. The procedure usually takes about 30 minutes, depending on how well you tolerate the procedure. The technician will obtain the images they need and remove the tube as soon as the procedure is done. After the scan, you will be monitored in the department and if you feel well and the team are happy with your observations, like your blood pressure and heart rate, you will go home and the report will be sent to the doctor who requested the scan. As the local anaesthetic spray can affect your swallowing, you are advised not to eat for at least an hour after the scan. You are also advised to take public transport or a taxi to go home and not to operate machinery for the rest of the day if the sedative was used during the scan. So a TOE is an invasive procedure and the main complication is damage to your food pipe. This is rare and key to avoiding complications is gentle manoeuvring of the probe. If the operator finds that you are not able to swallow the probe or tolerate the procedure, then the test will be stopped. If this is the case, then don't worry. It's not your fault. Some people just can't tolerate it. The next step for the heart team is to decide whether it needs to be done on the general anaesthetic or consider an alternative test. The third type of echo is a stress echo. In this situation, the healthcare professional will start with doing a standard transthoracic echo to get baseline images of your heart and then move on to doing the stress echo. A stress echo assesses how well your heart handles stress when it's working harder and it can reveal issues that might not be visible at rest. A stress echo is mostly used to assess if your heart has a good blood supply as poor contraction of your heart may be due to blockages in your heart arteries called coronary heart disease. The stress echo is done during or immediately after physical stress like an exercise bike or with medication that mimics stress by making your heart work harder. To prepare for this scan, you may be asked to stop certain medications, so it's important to read the instructions carefully. If the drug is used as a stress agent, then you may be advised to avoid caffeine on the day of your scan. 
Additionally, to reduce the risk of vomiting, you are advised not to eat anything for a few hours before the scan. During the scan, you will be monitored closely using a heart monitor and blood pressure device. If the chemical stress agent is used, you may feel your heart racing as this is how the agent works. This test is very safe and there are usually no problems. There is a small risk of an abnormal heartbeat, chest pain or nausea and if this happens, the appropriate procedure will be taken. The scan will take about an hour and after the scan, you'll be monitored in the department until the team are happy for you to go home. The results will be discussed with you in a clinic appointment or after your scan, depending on the setup of your department. So to sum up, I've told you about the three different types of echo. Transthoracic echo being the most common type of echo. Transosophageal echo, where a probe is passed into your food pipe for detailed images of your heart and a stress echo to assess how your heart functions when it's working harder. Each type of echo has specific indications and generally safe. However, there are potential side effects to consider with transosophageal and stress echo. Echo is a hugely important tool in cardiology, helping us to make diagnosis and management of lots of different types of heart conditions. The future of ECHO looks promising, with ongoing research and development aimed at enhancing accuracy and expanding its clinical applications. Newer techniques like 3D ECHO provide even more detailed images of your heart, helping to improve diagnosis and management of patients. Strain imaging is another advanced method that measures the deformation of your heart muscle offering insights into conditions that might not be visible with traditional methods. The most exciting development is that ECHO can now be used beyond hospitals. There are now pocket-sized devices providing access for more patients. The pocket devices were really helpful during the COVID era when we wanted to reduce contact time to reduce risk of infection. Now these small portable devices are being used in clinic rooms and during ward rounds to quickly and effectively assess your heart using imaging. So I hope this video has helped demystify how the different types of echo work and why they're so important. Have you had an echo? Which type of echo did you have and what was your experience? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.